Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. God wants your heart. That should not surprise you. God made you. God redeemed you. God has prepared eternity for you. God wants your heart. And the reason is because you are God's treasure. God treasures you. And therefore God's heart is after you or for you. And so God wants you to find him to be your treasure. God wants your heart. The problem though is, is that we don't want to give God our heart. The reason is because we don't trust God with our heart. We, we want more of life and not less of life. And so we think that trusting God will give us less life and not more life. I'm reminded of a lousy story that many of you have probably heard. And I'm going to share it anyway. It's a lousy story about a young man. He was mountain climbing. And as he's climbing up the mountain, he's about little, almost towards the top, two-thirds of the way up. And he, his rope got loose and came off, uh, detached. And he started falling down the mountain. As he's falling down, he's grabbing, grabbing, grabbing. And he holds on to a branch. And he's holding now with two hands. And he's looking down. And he realizes he has a long way to go down. And he's looking up. And there's a long way to go up. And all he's doing is holding on to this branch. And in his fear, he cries out for help. Help, help! Is anyone there? And surprise, then God shows up. God says, I'm here. I'm here for you, my son. And the man goes, oh, good. Can you help me up, God? I can. What do I have to do, God? And God said, let go. The man said, are you really God? He says, I know your name. I know your birth. I'm God. Just let go. The man holding on for everything says, is there anyone else up there? <laughs> I told you it was lousy, and many of you have heard that before. But that's the problem. We find ourselves holding on to a branch for dear life when God has given us so much more. And we hold on to that branch Except God's saying, let go, I have you. And that's where we find Jesus in our gospel reading. He's with disciples. And they're afraid. They don't have much of a life, but they started to follow Jesus, and they're gaining a life. And Jesus is saying, I want to give you more life. But they have that one branch that they're holding on to. And so listen again to what Jesus says. Do not be afraid, little flock. For it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let go. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now I love how these words begin, because he says, Do not be afraid, little flock. These are the words of the good shepherd. These are the words of the one who loves his, his flock. He knows his flock. He knows them by name. He loves his flock. When he's saying these words, these aren't words from an angry master. These aren't words from God who's upset. These are words from a shepherd who loves his sheep. And he sees them so afraid. He sees them holding on to the one thing and they're not letting go. And he's saying, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. See, Jesus knows something about fear. Something we all know. When we're afraid, we hold on to that one thing and we often neglect everything else. When we're afraid, it doesn't open us up to more life. It closes us to life. When we're afraid, we, we focus on the little thing and we miss everything else. When we're afraid, we enter into the scarcity mindset. 
And you know what that scarcity mindset is? It's that feeling that you, you lack something. You lack either time or you lack money, and there's not enough resources out there to make it work no matter how hard you try. And so you're just stuck in this narrow mindset trying to, to make a life with as little as you have. And so you think, I just have to hold on to that one thing, that one political idea, that one truth that I'm holding on to, that one extra dollar that I have. Whatever it is, we're holding on to that one thing so tight that we're not living at all. We're just focused on that. That's the scarcity mindset. Now there's another mindset, the abundant mindset. The abundant mindset is a mindset that believes there's enough to go around. There's enough out there. There's enough life. There's enough God. There's enough hope. There's enough people. There's enough to go around. So the scarcity is that there's not enough. We have to fight each other for it. The abundance is, mindset is that there is enough. We can find a way. And you understand how these mindsets work because we all fall into them. For instance, in work. You might find yourself in a place where you have to take a, rest, a risk. The abundant mindset's willing to take a risk. Ah, it might work, might not. You got enough inside of you to, to figure out and make it work, and you try. The scarcity mindset's like, I just can't take that risk. I'm not willing to do that. Or in love. In love, it looks something like this. When all your friends have relationships and you don't, and you're just so jealous of them, they have their relationships, there's just no one around, and you're kind of just upset about this reality. That's scarcity mindset. Abundant mindset is like, well, I'm really happy for them. I know there's someone for me. Don't know when the time's going to come. There's someone for me. I'm really happy for them. This is all good. You see how that works? So often we find ourselves in this scarcity mindset, holding on to the one branch, upset that there's not enough to go around, versus the abundant mindset where there is enough. There's someone for me. There's enough for this world. Now listen again to Jesus' words, because you're going to see scarcity versus abundance in these words. Listen again. He says, do not be afraid, little flock. For it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see the mindsets there? The scarcity mindset is, is holding on to possessions so they don't wear out, so that they're not stolen, they're not destroyed. The abundant mindset is, Opening your hands up, knowing that with open hands you might receive so much more. That there might be more life, more kingdom of God, more God in our lives. That's what Jesus is calling us to be. The kind of people that aren't holding on to the one branch, but the kind of people with open arms to receive all that God is doing. To be blessed, but also to bless. And to see how the kingdom of God bubbles over. And yet Jesus knows how hard it is uh, for us to be like that. And so he goes on to, to tell a story. And this story is meant to be a parable to help us. He tells a story about a master who's in town for a wedding. This is a master who doesn't live at the house. He's way far away. But he's in town for the wedding. And after the wedding, at some point it's going to end. Like some point... The wedding's over, but this is the Middle East. Like, their weddings go. This is Israel. Like, they're going to party all night long. I mean, it's like Danes during the summer. When I was in Albor, and it's summer, and it's light till 11 or 1 o'clock in the morning, they are out and loud and loving life. Why? Because they're like, there's sun, and it's warm, and it's 1 o'clock in the morning. This is great. They're trying to soak every minute of it. And that's the master. But the question then begins is, what about you servants who are home? Do you, the scarcity mindset is, well, we don't know when he's going to come. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to turn off all the lights because we don't want to be wasteful. Put out the fire because 
We don't want to burn too much wood. We're going to close down everything so that the next morning we get enough sleep and we can produce. That's scarcity mindset. The abundant mindset is something like this. Hey, let's take turns. Let's keep that fire ripping and roaring. Let's have all the lights on. We're going to burn down the candles. Why? Because when he comes in, we know what the master's like. He's fun. He's been out all night. He's a little like, you know, a little fun. He's going to come and he's going to say, hey, open up the fridge. I have the munchies. Let's eat. And then he might even cook something for us. And we're going to have a party all night long, go into the wee hours of the day. We're going to wake up the next morning totally tired, but it's going to be worth it because we're going to have the story of the visit from the master. The abundant mindset. And what Jesus is saying then is this, is how are you going to be, are you going to be the type of person holding on to the one branch, trying to make everything work, feeling the pressure of all of this world? Or are you going to be open to the kingdom, open to God, open to the miracle, open to all the things that he's going to do? Which way do you want to live? Remember, the one who's telling the story is Jesus. He's the good shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep. When he says, do not be anxious about what you will wear, he also knows that he's the one who's clothed you in him. Clothed you for all eternity. Or when he says, do not be anxious about what you eat, He's the one who feeds you with the bread of heaven. He has so much more for you, not less. And so let go of the little branch that you're clinging on to. Stretch your arms out wide to the kingdom of God. Stretch your arms out wide to others. For in God's kingdom, there is enough good food and enough good drink. And enough good stories. And enough good life. And enough good music. And enough good music and dancing. Because the kingdom of God is God's party for you. So light your lamps. Open up your house. Know that the kingdom of God is coming. And be ready for the party. In Jesus' name. Amen.